evening, top of builder of things at my shire farm. Today we're going to be talking about our brooders. And uh, if you have any questions about those, why you go ahead and ask them and we will get around to that. We're going to do a tour first. And uh, so if you'll have a list of questions prepared, we'll read those off and try to get those answered. But uh, this is our new hatch. We've got uh, our new lockdown uh, in here. We've got a new Gigantor that's under underway, and uh, it'll go over there. Uh, we'll talk about this a little later, and, and we've got a video coming out on the new lockdown and how we built it, but we can give you just a little brief on that. So, yep, we've got another big Gigantor here. We've got a sink here. And all these, but we'll talk about that a little later when we get back in. So in here, we made some progress on what we call our shipping, uh, receiving, shipping, processing room, and uh, coming along quite nicely. A few things I want to point out here. So one of the reasons why we didn't put metal siding in here is one, we're going to be spending some time in here. But two, uh, we wanted it a little more cleanable. So this, the white stuff here is your FRP, fiberglass reinforced plastic. And uh, this here is actually, some of it is real slate, some of it is mixed slate. And we've made a little J molding here on uh, our brake. So this goes up and over and then back behind the plywood. And then we have OSB and then we've glued this um, FRP board, which is kind of a restaurant kitchen kind of material. And then this is an FRP molding. And then on top of here, I used a, uh, a stick down flooring, but I applied it using the same glue that we used for this, which is FRP glue. If, when we tried to just stick it on the um, oriented strand board, the OSP board, it just fell off. So this would be a really good experiment because uh, there'll be a lot of temperature changes in here. If it does work, it's going to be really nice for any of you guys that have had quail. It just gets amazingly dirty. And we wanted this to be Super duper clean. We'll have some doors over here. I'm going to make a little nook here for our quail processing stuff. This is a little quail plucker. This is what we use for our scalder. Um, that's a little gasmo I made back there for pressure washing the insides of the quail out. And this, of course, is just a pressure washer. We'll have a bathroom here. This is our little tray that you'll step into. It'll have the disinfectant on your feet. Coming in and out of the quail room. That is not the bathroom. That's the bathroom. That's the bathroom. Right. And uh, have a floor drain course, and that, um, uh, you know, we're no concrete guys. It looks nice. I wish we had a little more slope on it, but it works, and that's nice. We got um, our sink here for 100 bucks and uh, $90 Amazon. Uh, faucet here, which is really nice. This is something that came out of our, one of our brooders that we were kind of handy for not reaching down in the bowl. But that's kind of how that goes. We got a little water heater here. Um, this a demand hot water heater. It's electric. These are our valves for our high pressure, uh, medium pressure, our hot water. And then this is our low pressure here. So this low pressure will be feeding all the waters and our incubator, our lockdown for the hydration, um, and then of course our filter. And this is the main shop, <clears throat> which is a freeze-proof thing. So we can uh, drain all this down by taking this filter out, and this will all drain out. And here's the main barn. <clears throat> Uh, we still have some trim to go on this and uh, around the edges, but basically the main structure is complete now 
having trimmed out the windows and uh, all the windows are trimmed out in aluminum. So everything you see there is aluminum. You still need to do the caulking on those windows, but everything is power washable in here. Still got the jams to finish out. Today, uh, I'm gonna take you out back to show you what we've been working on here the last couple days. Uh, <clears throat> but today I got this hooked up. And so this is the water line, two inch water line. It has a sub pump uh, connected to it outside. I'll show that to you. And we just got it hooked up today and we'll plug that in for you uh, at the end of the tour and show you how it works. So our cages will end up being in between the windows. So our cages are gonna be this big, three tiers like they are now, and the conveyor belts that will dump into this gutter and get God, we're hoping that that water washes it down and the thing. We have not tried that yet. And uh, we could have done that live tonight, but now <laughs> we got this. Not gonna do it. So, because uh, that just happened just a few hours ago when I got that hooked up. So let's go outside and I'll show you what we've been working on this past, I don't know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and today. While I'm walking outside, guys, I'm actually going to flip the phone. Uh, it seems to do better when I'm stand when it's standing straight. Alright, so these are our, our free light fixtures that we got. That we're uh, switching over to LED lights, and uh, it's been awesome. And that's, let me, uh, lights are hung. We got about $10 in each one. And I think there's 92 lights that are required in the barn. So it's nice that we only have 10 bucks in them, that's for sure. So I had to take my cool gate down here. I have this coolness going on here. And we're getting cool gate stuff. I had to take it down so I could get the bobcat through here to fill in this hole. This is our, behind your toilet is the toilet tank. This is our toilet tank here. This is 17 foot deep, or 17 foot long, I should say. It's about 11 foot down below this grade. So 11 and six is the 17 foot that this thing represents. Uh, it'll hold um, about 5,000 gallons, we'll say, just slightly over 5,000 gallons. <clears throat> this is the, the pipe that at, on the end of that has a, a sub pump, a three-quarter horse sub pump. Kind of nice because that float that's on the sub pump, if this tank should be empty for some reason, why then the sub pump won't run. So that's kind of cool. And the idea here, this, gets, this is... Like I said, we've just been working on this, and um, so um, we got a long, long way to go. But part of the concept is we'll be able to get water into this tower from both barns. We can the water. We'll put gutters on both of these, and the water will come down and, and keep this thing full. This week, earlier this week, we were able to get our gutters connected to. This tank that's in here, it goes from that excavation there all the way to that. It's about 30 some feet long. It's eight foot in diameter. It's just like this tank here. It's 10,000 gallon tank and it's now hooked up. That's why we could run water in our gutter for the first time. And then this morning, I got this little bucket here. It's a sub pump pit. I got that attached to the tank. Uh, you can see the fiberglass that I've used to connect that. <clears throat> and there'll be an outlet going that way through that trench there. And that'll be more on the lines of a leech line with a shut off. That'll be shut off hopefully all the time. And then there'll be one coming this way and one going that way. That way is going to be going to a 
possible future uh, engineered wetland if required. But this one's coming to um, something I really would like to show you, but um, won't be able to tonight. But it's my sewer treatment plant that I built. It's five Gaylords uh, long. Some of them have air in it, some of them won't. It has different bacteria that uh, doing. Guy in Australia, if you used to, his uh, sewer treatment plant in Australia is kind of how I built that off of. And then that'll have a holding tank behind that with another pump. That pump will pump it into this tank and then that tank, of course, pumps it in that. The whole idea here is that we can recycle, reuse this water to flush the toilets in the gutter there. So we can use that to, to get the water back or the poop back into this tank. And then that tank will need pumped out periodically. But the idea is that we can have this water and not waste the water. We don't have water to waste here at the Shire. So if this works out, it's gonna be super cool. Uh, we may end up having a, a little hoop house over top of this. That's our uh, aviary over there that's gotten pretty overgrown. We have a couple turkeys in there now. And that's kind of what we've been doing. That went in last fall, but that just got done this week. That got done this week. Just got put in the ground this week. And today I, I got this thing working in that. So tomorrow, if it doesn't get any wetter, we'll be digging an eight foot hole here, 10 foot wide and 24 foot long, eight foot deep. And that's where the sewer treatment plant will actually be in the ground. So yeah, lots to do. Uh, I'm just so glad that we're starting to get, this was really concerning me. And all this is kind of predicated on whether the gutters even work and we don't know that. But today was the first day we could try it, but it didn't, uh, didn't happen yet. This, this, these tanks that we're talking about, uh, there are four of those now on the property. So one is our root cellar. And uh, we haven't used that. We didn't use it last year, but the years past we've used it for our potatoes. And squash and such works out pretty good. And I dug into this embankment, pulled in three-fourths of one of those tanks and then covered it over, made the Shire thing. That's our logo, of course. The other, the other building there is our smokehouse. <clears throat> and then there's another tank that's in the ground here. And I'm good cows back there, my good cow. And um, we have another tank in the ground here. And it's fed with the field tile. Years ago, they put field tile in this on this entire farm and we interrupted the field tile and the field tile fills this thing up. We've got a little hand pump there in the event that we don't have power, we can still water our cattle and pigs and garden and all that good stuff with just using that. Better than nothing. So that's that that's kind of the tool. I'm gonna show you um, we could go upstairs, I can show you our little storeroom and I want to plug in the sub pump to show you how that water goes through the gutter system and um, and then we'll get to the brooders if any of you guys have any questions. If not, I guess we'll call it an evening. So go upstairs here. And as I mentioned before, we had a lot of really good luck we bought these metal 2x8 floor joists, or they're studs. I use them as our floor joists, a buck a piece. We did, we did make the trusses here at the Shire. Uh, it was a bad idea. The trusses are fine, but the money we didn't save is not worth it. <laughs> Here's our uh, scissors that we have for sale, our 24 count plastic trays that we have for sale. These are the 30. Yep. Count trays that we have for sale. And then these are our uh, live bird boxes, not for sale. And these are our shipping uh, foamers 
uh, that, that you, when you buy eggs, you get some absolutely not free, but, uh, but you'll get some then. This is, I see people on, on Facebook and YouTube that have made different versions of how to poke these holes out. This is one of my little prototype that I made, uh, and it works pretty darn good. So I haven't, um, I haven't developed it any further, but um, that's how we poke our holes out. And you can see these are little PVC pipes with holes in the right spot and a little gasmo there. So, <clears throat> and then we collect these and we use these as our shipping peanuts uh, along with the peanuts that we have to buy. So, and this kind of a cool little feature here, I have this window and so why not put it in? Because it gives us a really nice bird's eye view of our, and so that's kind of fun too. All these windows have been reclaimed. Um, these are just some old windows. They were old double hung windows that I just used the sashes out of that somebody gave me years ago. Finally got a place to use. This is our little door that we, you know, can open up to. Look out, though. To bring stuff up here. And it's just cool. So that's that. And now let's turn on that sub pump just for fun. And that will be our update on the progress of the new barn. And I'm glad it's coming along. The weather's sneaking up on me now. And we're really going to get this outside stuff done. But uh, I feel pretty confident that we'll get our sewer thing in line. And then we'll start on the, the new cages and the conveyors. And I know we wanted to talk about uh, conveyors. You guys have a lot of questions on conveyors. But that's our little floor flush here. And gosh, I hope it washes the poop down. I think it will. It's, and we spent a lot of time thinking it will. And um, we'll update you on that. We might be sad, but I hope we're not too sad. <laughs> So that's the tour. Let's get to our feature of the evening here, which is our new brooders. So, um, if you've seen our tour of the old facility, you will have seen our old brooders. Which are very similar to this. Uh, the, the major difference is these are on wheels. Um, now, we're not suggesting or proposing that anyone build their brooders on wheels. The ones we had it for were up against the wall and screwed to the wall. Um, because these are on wheels, I needed to make a, a power line that we could plug these in too easily. And this was shop made uh, out of the same floor joists. Uh, uh, there, I split the floor joists in two and then, you know, locked them into a square rather than a channel. So it's a channel, I cut them and then locked them like that to make that square. And uh, it just happened to fit a receptacle. And that's how that happened because I needed something to make that stand. Uh, so the, the thing is, is Granted, we go to a lot of trouble. There's gutters, our sewer system, the floors and the drains and these lockdowns. It's not because we have to or we should or whatever. It's to make this thing so we can keep our quail affordable. If we're working at, you know, cleaning out cages all day long or, you know, moving birds all day long and doing this all day, we couldn't afford to offer our quail at the price that we do. I enjoy building this stuff most of the time. <laughs> it's getting kind of old. I'm getting kind of old. Um, but um, that's why we do it, is so we can keep our prices as reasonable as possible because we're a little more efficient than the average bear. And 
that's my background, being efficient, and I, I, I strive to do that. So uh, that's why I say we're not suggesting that you have your brooders on wheels. We're just saying that if we're going to ship birds, we can move these birds to the shipping area a lot easier than what we were doing before. So one of the things that we did different this time is we had one door before. And so when you're shipping four-week-old birds and you've opened one door and you're trying to get a bird out, the other one's jumping out the other side. So this time we made two doors, um, which may be detrimental in some cases, but in most cases, you know, birds are running away from you and they're not jumping out the top. So that's that's the premise of, uh, of the two-door system. We have here, um, um, we have a half-inch screen here, and you guys could say, well, yikes, that's awful big for little baby birds. And so uh, this is actually a, a, a Robbie thing uh, from JMF. Yeah. From JMF. He suggested that we do the, the uh, half, half a half bottoms, and then for the first week or so, you put down these gla these brown, uh, what are they? I guess they're blue. They are. They are blue. <laughs> um, blue paper towels. And like automotive towels. Automotive towels, and the babies are able to, to walk on that comfortably, and then a week later, you can just take these up, because you know, they're not pooping very much when they're so little, and they're big enough that they can walk on the screen, and you're good to go. Now, Zach likes using these waters. I think it's dumber than dumb, but that's all right. And uh, <laughs> this, is, um, this is our heat lamp. We do change uh, bulbs for di different seasons. We don't know how temperature controlled this room's gonna be, but we did just get our new furnace in that we'll have to install. And then we have uh, our feeders that we talked about two weeks ago, and we made uh, and gave away. Uh, did anybody comment on it? Yeah. Taking it apart, used it as a, a pattern, and it can now make his own and modify that pattern because uh, this is actually this is quite a modification. The only other the only thing that I will mention is is those doors were built for our old feeders, and when they wanted a bigger feeder, it just barely fits through that door. So the other things that have happened here, and I'll take this one here. Do we have them all in there? Um, they're all up there. So, all right. Well, I'll get it clean. So. These birds do waste a lot of food, as we all know. And uh, so what I have made is an auxiliary little tray here that goes underneath uh, this, sits on top of the poop tray. And it um, is not too much bigger than that. I'm going to open this door. Not too much bigger than that, but and I don't know if you can see that. How it is. Yeah. There, there it is. There. That's good. And um, but that catches some of the food that that they'll spill, and then daily he can take this out and, and kind of redump it in there, put a little poop out there, put a little poop in there. Mm -hmm. so, so that's how that goes. And then we have the poop trays himself. And this time I did it a little differently. And then normally I have the, the sides all the way around. I left this side off so that it makes it a little easier to dump out. And that, that gets dumped out into a wheelbarrow. Uh, again, uh, this is all uh, second stuff aluminum where they've cut it off a big sheet. All these are fall offs off, you know, off. 20 foot piece that they might have cut for somebody, and I paid, I think, 50 cents for um, a piece twice that long. So I got a dollar in these. These wheels are, you might recognize them as off a grocery cart. Um, we were able to get the grocery carts for nothing, which was a major mess. 
and um, and this is slightly different than the other ones. And then the angle iron was was falled off too, and uh, very inexpensive. This is OSB. This is some more scrap aluminum that I bent here to go underneath there to make a nice thing. And this is the uh, paint that we originally bought for the flooring that did not work. Now we have an epoxy floor. So, and then these hinges, not that I'm cheap, but apparently I am cheap. Mm. I cut these hinges in two. Uh, they're a regular door hinge, but I cut them in two so that I could get... <laughs> Um, yeah, so my time <laughs> apparently isn't worth too much. I didn't know that. Yes, it's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. God. So, uh, <laughs> that's about that. So, this is our new brew, or lockdown. And to go into some detail here, this is our controller that we've settled on. This is the humidifier uh, that we... Uh, it doesn't read right. I wish we had our three three gauges up here that we normally have, because uh, we have three that agree but disagree with that, and it is around sixty percent. So, um, like I say, we have a video to come out on this. Uh, no, here's all the sensors. Oh. So, yeah, we've got. I don't know what we got. I don't guess they're turned down. I don't think they are. I think that one is. That might be turned down. So we made this out of uh, plastic, PVC plastic, and um, which is kind of nice because it doesn't harbor any um, bacteria, so to speak. And then these all have an individual poop tray now, which is nice because it really, and the ideal here, is all of this stuff comes out, the humidifiers come out, the fans come out, everything comes out of this when we clean it. Even these can come out. But these guys pop out, and this is going to be so much easier to clean than our old one was. Um, it's not even funny. So It does, again, it does really, really suck. Um, this should make it a lot easier. We even have the, these are sized for the trays we use that go in the incubator. So we can lay that tray into that, flip it over, and bam, your brooders. And we should be able to get uh, 1,200. 1,200. 1,200. More. Eggs. Yeah. And here they go. Uh, not that we would unless we have a custom hatch for somebody. But normally you'd have, you know, two or three different things going on at the same time. Well, ideally, the goal is we're going to have two of those filled up each week. But they're only in there for a couple of days, three days. Correct. So, yeah, that's how that goes. And we've got, so this is my, this is my third lockdown, sort of, that I made. Yeah. Second full-size lockdown, or second gigantor that I'm making now. Doing a video on that as well. But I got a full blow video on this, and that'll be another time. So, do we have any questions, Zach, at all? We do. We've, yeah, we do. All right, so guys, I'm going to start reading your guys' comments and questions. So if you guys have any questions about the brooder system, why we did something, um, you know, how, why, when, where, anything like that. Uh, if you have any questions as far as the tour goes uh, that you saw, feel free to ask now. Uh, when I finish the questions, then we will sign off and uh, we'll see you tomorrow for next week's topic. Um, but uh, Jesus says hello from t uh, Tucson, Mex or Arizona. Uh, quail certainly are cute little poop and dust machines. They are. Uh, what's the best wire size for floor cages? We use half by half. And, and we are painting this now with a rubberized sort of paint. Right. So, and, and do you do half by half on the colony cages as well? As well, yeah. We yes. Half, half by half everywhere on the floor. <clears throat> And then the, the framework that holds this up, I did use pressure treated wood. So and we, we have settled on 
something between 10 and 8 inches apart. And then I'm ripping these out of a 2x4. So um, just buy a 2x4 and rip slivers. So I, they don't need to be any stronger than this. And anything wider is just going to collect poop. So save a little money. Actually, these are um, decking material that I that, that was really pretty, didn't have any knots, and that's what I used to build that. Okay. Good question. Uh, Valerie says hi from the UK. Okay. Uh, yep. Uh, Juan says hello from Monroe, North Carolina. Uh, Chicky Chicken says the bun looks amazing. Amazing bun, thank you. Yep. Nick, hello. Um, Chicky Chicken says, is the cost of the foam shipper shippers factored into the price of the hatching eggs or into the shipping cost? You can answer that. <laughs> shipping cost. Shipping cost. So that's part of the shipping cost. Um, we're buying them by the Kazoos, you know, so we, it's not like we're getting them stepped out a million times. So we've got that down there. Yeah, we... Halfway reasonable, anyhow. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, it's him and us. There is no middleman right. as yeah. far as the foamers go. So we get the best price and we've worked out some deals to, you know. So with your shipping cost, I mean, you're, we're adding, you know, a few dollars to just pay for the cost of the shipper. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that just makes sense, right? Uh, Scott says, hello. Um, Valerie says, they look fantastic. I hope it makes life easier. Love the idea of the three-sided pooper tray. Yeah. Uh, also like the idea of having the babies on the paper. Absolutely. Uh, the first couple of years, well, since the beginning, we've had bedding. Yeah, we've always had just... Uh, solid bottom using um, poplar and pine bedding mm -hmm. and uh, it needed to be scooped out you know and we, I, I did make some fairly nice scoopers but but it you know it was a lot of work and he didn't do it regularly it was a lot a lot of work and um, and this they just seem to be a lot happier and cleaner and they seem to be yeah they seem to be a lot more active um not only do they seem to be a lot more active but i've definitely seen um the first hatch we put in here was not great but there was issues with that it wasn't the it wasn't the uh brooders but since then i think my fatality has dropped in half yeah almost half as far as the old brooders to the new brooders. Um, so, and, and again, we've got, you know, before we had, you know, where was the light before? Because you changed the, base, the light. It was the basically in the same spot. <clears throat> but this has got aluminum inside too. So with these trays removed, the idea is that we can take this into the main barn where the floor is sloped and power wash it out. So we're gonna be, uh, power washing this through. when we move these birds into our thing or ship them out this gets completely power washed and sanitized every time that did not happen before it could have would have should have but it was just too much work they were too dirty in the first place we couldn't power wash them out so right uh, we really have high hopes for these new lockdowns <clears throat> yeah we can power wash them out yeah, and like he said before, you know, the reason he does all this stuff is because he is, you know, his, his brain works to be more efficient. So before, me cleaning a brooder would be I have to move the birds, then I have to scrape the, the bedding out, then I have to take the plastic out, and then I have to pressure wash that, then I have to spray it down with, you know, our stuff to clean it, then I have to let it air dry, then I have to put it in, then I have to put the bedding in, and then blah, blah, blah. This, I move the birds, I roll this outside, I pressure wash the crap out of it, and I bring it back in. Like, there's just so much easier. Yeah, it's going to be another huge time saver. And at the rate we're going, time is important. Mm -hmm. And it's important you guys... Know. Right. Um, she mentioned the papers. She likes the papers. Um, the blue paper towels that we use are the only ones we, we recommend. If you just get the cheap white paper towels from Kroger or whatever... Um, they're too, 
too flimsy. Yeah, they're too flimsy, and then you'll have a ton of spray leg. A ton. Um, so blue paper towels are much thicker and, uh, and not so... And they're more absorbent. They're just stronger. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yep. Um, how long do you provide the piles of feed for the hatchlings? Oh, how long? Yeah, that, that's these little piles. Oh, said. oh, yeah. That we had a couple <clears throat> years ago, we had birds, baby birds dying. And we didn't know if we had a disease. We didn't know. Which we didn't. We didn't. Just so everybody knows. We no disease. We haven't had a disease here. Yeah. Knock on wood. Yeah. We didn't know they were dying. <laughs> and so we. Paid money, had these people come in and sit you know, and test the birds. They go, no, these birds aren't sick. They're starving to death. They were all fine all summer, all fall. Now it's winter. They're getting colder, and they wouldn't leave the heat source to go to get the food or water. Which so, is why you kind of put the feeder more in the middle this time, or that, a wider feeder. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons we have the feeders to the outside, and now we've put it uh, closer. But these, but so what they said is you got to have the water and the feed right underneath these newborn chicks. They will not leave the warmth of their mama, mama light, to go feed themselves. And that was our only problem when we were dropping babies by the school. Right. Thank goodness we just didn't know. Right. And now you know. So you don't have to make that mistake. Because in the summertime, they don't care. But in the wintertime, and they're close to the light, you got to have that food and water right underneath them. Great question. I'm glad you asked when I got to it. You hadn't asked. Right. Uh, to be specific with your question, I only put, so I'll put the pile on each side of the water right in front of the light, and then the, the feed is right there. I don't refill that. So once that's out, they're old enough to, to figure it out. They only need it for two, three days, and those two piles will last 50 day olds, three days, easy. Yeah. Easy. So we have 16 of these lockdowns. Brooders. The hatch are now. Brooders. Brooders. We have 16 brooders and the hatch So we should... The idea is that we can rotate four of these every week, giving us four weeks in the brood. Right. Before we would put them in a colony cage, research cage, or in a box to ship to you all. Correct. Yeah, so that's, that's a good point. So, for example, let's just say all these are full. Well, they won't. Well, they will be. But those three, let's say they're three weeks old, they're going to go straight into the shipping room and then we're just going to box them up from there and ship them to you guys whether you guys are buying them on the auction site or the website or whatever um so then there's no continuous moving and things like that yeah because right now just getting them into a box is difficult a at job. best it's, a big it's not fun days Anything else? uh yeah how long nope uh do you drop temperature do you drop the temperature in the brooder before transferring them to the cages at three weeks? If so, how do you adjust the temperature in the new setup? Again, that will be kind of uh, ambient temperature related as to how we do that, but we haven't had any real issues at three and four weeks. No, how I've been doing it is, um, and he's made some plastic that I need to find, but so, you know, let's say they're, they're in the brooder that he's in, right? And at two weeks old, or two and a half weeks, about three or four days before I'm ready to move them, I'll turn the light off and I'll cover it up so that more heat stays in. Uh, and then you just, you got to kind of watch them. You know, they'll tell you if they're too cold. They'll tell you if they're too hot, you know. Um, so, for example, we've got some in this brooder here, and so they're young enough that they still need the light, but not all the way. So I've got one side for, you know, some of the cold ones, and then the other side is wide open for the ones that want to get away from, from the heat. Yeah, well, we do keep these covered up <clears throat> most of the time. 
Uh, yes, even during the summer. At least one side, all the time. Um, did you, did you, I've had very, I've had very same thing happen today for the first time. I usually put it in on the floor. Two died. The thief? Is that what you're talking about? I think so. Valerie, I th are you talking about the feed? But yes, if you put it right next to the light, make sure there's water next to the light too because they won't leave. Yeah. We've learned that really, really hard way. Yeah, and we couldn't figure that out because everything is just fine in the fall. Everything is just fine in the summer and then things just right. fell apart in the winter time. And we didn't have an issue with it the first, the winter before because we were in the other barn and we were keeping them inside because we weren't really going yet, you know. Yeah. So we just didn't know. Uh, she said yes. Yeah. Yeah. So feed and water. If you guys can learn anything from everything that he said, that is the most important thing you can learn. Probably so. Um, let's see. Juan says, thank you for your time and your info to us. And Van says, hi, from Florida. Awesome info as always. Can you upload these live streams later? I can watch it since you're getting ready to evacuate. Uh, yeah, I will be posting each week. Uh, we'll be doing live videos every Sunday at 7 p.m. Once we're done, I will post it uh, to YouTube so you can watch it later. Um, and then on Mondays, we post, and that varies during the times, but I just post a regular video saying what the topic will be for that next coming week. Um, but we're doing a lot of really fun stuff. Uh, I think the last time Papa did one, yeah, last time Papa did one, he made a feeder, showed you how to make it, and then we gave one away. Um, and then last week uh, was the most uh, productive week as far as people watching and people participating. Um, and this week seems to be pretty well also. So you guys uh, keep it up and we will also. But well, since we're talking about keeping it up, yeah. why don't you talk? Well, this was Zach's idea, and I hope I can relay this properly. But we've had a lot of that people asking about our conveyor system, our top, top secret conveyor system. <laughs> and Zach has been reluctant to talk about that because, once again, that, that does make us more efficient. And we feel like anybody that's interested in the conveyor system is basically going to be our competition. So why should we do that? But, uh, and then we've um, kind of got harassed into talking about it. His idea is this. We have, I don't know how many we have now. 4,100. Hmm? 4,100. Okay, so I was gonna say 4,000 subscribers? Yes. We have 4,000 subscribers to YouTube? Yes. We have 4,000 subscribers, <laughs> I'll get this. Uh, and he says, hey, when we get to 10,000 subscribers, then we'll, we'll be big enough and have a, a big enough lead on the competition that we will share with you how to build a conveyor system. Yeah, have a large enough base that I'll be comfortable to share. Right. Have him share. So, uh, but I, it, it's, it's complicated, and we use a robot to help build these things. <laughs> literally. Uh, literally, it's a CNC machine. And um, and uh, I suppose you could do it without one, but it would be a lot more difficult. Uh, but anyhow, we are now willing to give that up, but when and if, if and when, uh, we would ever reach 10,000 subscribers to our YouTube, YouTube channel. My Shire Farm Farm channel. YouTube. Right. So if you guys want to learn about the conveyors, all you got to do is pick your favorite video, share it to Facebook, share it on your YouTube channel, get people to watch it, get people interested, and then they'll like, they'll subscribe, they'll share, and, uh, and then we'll go from there. Uh, we do need a little bit over halfway to start doing the conveyor video. Um, so I'll do some fun stuff along the way, you know, we'll do maybe, a, you know, a contest or a giveaway on, you know, whoever shares the most or whoever gets the most likes or something like that, um, down the road. So I'll help out. Uh, but, uh, we've, I mean, that's, that's been more questions than yeah. I care to remember as far as people asking me how to do it. What do we make it out of? Right. And we'll be 
of course, uh, now that these are done, shipping area is getting closed. We've got cabinets to put in and stuff like that. Uh, the next thing on the list inside is to start building cages. So, um, and we will have a video on how to build the cages. And then when it's appropriate, we'll do the video on how we built the conveyors that goes underneath those cages. But Because they are built separately. Yeah, they're, they're completely separate items. Right. And maybe at some point I can make component parts or something for people that want to build a conveyor. Because it, it does, you know, it's it's nice to say, done. That's pretty cool. So, right. Um, um, yeah, and the reason why we did not do conveyors for our brooders is because either we could do that or we could make them movable. Yeah, it would. Yeah. It, so. It didn't, it didn't seem to pay. Right. It, it gets really complicated because you need the space for the conveyor. You know, the conveyor has to be smaller than, you know, the wheelbase. And, and just, they don't poop that much in the brooder. I mean, you know, I'm only going to be cleaning out two to four brooders every four or five days, you know, okay. and it doesn't take that long, so I don't mind it. And today was the first day he cleaned the floor. Of course, we've been tracking mud in from the mud. Yeah, back. so don't look at that. Um, but uh, It did clean very well. But it, it's a little slipperier than what we would like to have, but it certainly cleaned up nicely. And we have... There's a hole back here in the wall and in the floor. And I, I, think you can I can see it, yeah. Um, there's a hole <laughs> where he just was showing yeah. you before, and then yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And he was able to, that, just the water that he used to clean the floor took that away. And now we've, we'll have a little switch that turns on the sump pump. And yeah, it's going to be sure. wonderful. Uh, thank you. Enjoy the videos. What kind of light bulbs do you use for the brooders? Uh, they do change all year long. Um, we usually do the 225 during the winter um, and then the 125, usually the rest of the year, usually. Um, but again, I'm always keeping an eye on them and I'm willing to switch them out whenever or, you know, there's been times during the heat of the summer that I've just used a regular 75 watt light bulb in there because it's just been so hot. So. Uh, on my last incubation, I had three eggs that were only half developed ideas on what could cause this. I would need a lot more information. So if you want to message me on Facebook at Zach Green or My Shire Farm, or you can text me at 937-760-7282. I will get your information. We'll find out what happened. Um, but some, you know, not all of them are going to, not all, are, not all of them are going to hatch, even though they're fertile. Um, okay. Thanks. Have y'all all tried ceramic heat bulbs uh we have on. yeah we i don't remember why we didn't i don't know we, we don't use them that. we might uh it's unlikely any competition would be as good as you you combine knowledge is your combined knowledge is fantastic i don't want to brag but <laughs> uh sharing some information back your way i use the same water cups you do for your automatic water system and had the same problem with birds bumping or stepping in the cups and draining water. Yeah, uh, I threw that idea out to him, um, and uh, he's got some good ideas for the new cages. That's right. For the red, the waters. Oh, yeah. The top and the bottom and the new bucket and the blah, blah, blah. Oh, the water, you say the water pressure's too high? Are you saying? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, the water pressure's too high, but now they're just stepping on them or going underneath them, and then it's just trickling out. So it's not as bad as it was, but they're still being yeah, pains. Um, what they got to do? Right. Uh, she gave us idea. I'll read to you later. That maybe you can take into the new cage idea. Great. So that's pretty cool. They sell cups almost identical to the ones they use. Uh, yeah, we're trying a couple new things now. Um, maybe we can talk about that next week or the next week. Papa does it. Uh, we can show you the water system in the old barn um, and kind of show you what we did differently. Um, it has helped. There are still some leaks, but it's nowhere. There's no floods. Yeah, we, and we're, we're going to a, even a different system in here. The, the low pressure 
I can show you what we use. Uh, the low pressure gas mill uh, that you have to buy is this guy here. Mm. Well, I bought I bought an expensive one from the poultry people. It was a white and red thing, you know, up there, and it was, I don't know how much it was, a couple hundred dollars, it seems like. It didn't work. Uh, it, it couldn't handle our, our water pressure, which is a well. I had to buy one of these regulators that goes down to like 20 pounds. This one here goes down 10 pounds. And um, in conjunction with that, so before it's over, you got $400 and a stupid water pressure. That only lasts and, six yeah, months. Only lasts a year, and it just didn't work very well. Now what we're doing is going, um, well, since we got this, we're using low pressure water going into a bucket that has a cattle water in it. Mm -hmm. So water that has a little float valve in it, uh, in a $20 cattle water. And so the water pressure now is what the water pressure is in that bucket. We have a, um, oh gosh, I can't think what it's called, bulkhead. We have a bulkhead on the, on the bottom of the bucket, and then that feeds whatever you're feeding, your waters or whatever. So hmm. basically it's just water in a bucket, but that you don't have to fill. Right. It's an automatic it's an water automatic bucket power. system. <laughs> yeah. And, um, it's and, worked great. And that's how, that's how we're controlling our pressure now, and we're kind of really have, we're able to go do away with all this. Because cow water does work on regular tap water. Correct. Pressure. Well, and it's also a really nice thing because now I can uh, climb up there uh, and I have a schedule where I'm putting electrolytes in, in the water. Right. So now they're getting some extra electro electrolytes, which before I couldn't do without a whole lot of mess. Yeah, with, that would have been a whole other right. system so, like you'd have in hydroponics or something like that. Right. So now you can just drop them in the bucket that you want to have them in. So that, that's, that's been a big plus too. Yeah, and they've, they definitely have shown their appreciation to that. Yeah, so... Uh, Learn, learn. Yep. That's our motto. All right. I think that's all the questions. So Great. we appreciate you all watching. We had a huge turnout this week. I really appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow for our next topic. I don't know what it'll be yet. So if you have any ideas, you can leave it in the comments. Uh, and I will take those suggestions. And uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye.